You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for November 3rd, 2017. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the headquarters of The Professional Left, where proactive cooperators always drink free. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Blue Gal, how you doing? I'm doing Ryan? great, Drift Glass. Hey, uh, we have a new sponsor, new fake sponsor, don't we? Yes, we do. We, we're, we're racking up the fake sponsors. Uh, we haven't heard back from, uh, from emergency party planners. Uh, they're, apparently they're there's going to be a flattened out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they're they're so busy in expansion mode they haven't been able to return our phone calls. But we hooked a new sponsor this week, the William of Ockham Shavers Club. <laughs> when you finally get tired of arcane excuses for obvious racism and sedition, join the William of Ockham Shavers Club. One blade, no bullshit. See, <laughs> See? Got it Occam's like that. razor, Got it like huh? That. <laughs> Uh-huh. That's right. Find it that cuts simplest it right down the middle. You know, maybe maybe they're just very anxious about the uh the, the work and the environment and the the uh, the uh, division between the classes and that no, fuck you. <laughs> if working class black and brown people voted for Hillary and working class white people voted for Trump, then being in the working class was not the deciding factor, dumbass. It and was I'm, race. I'm I'm up to here with Chris Matthews and his new book about Bobby Kennedy being ah, an excuse. It's an excuse for him to uh, wag a finger well, at whatever. the quote unquote Democratic Party, which doesn't exist in that way anymore. Um, nope. I, you know, this is the thing. It's just important to realize it's OK that the Democratic Party has become decentralized. Yes. That is an OK thing. It's it's yes. time for those of us. In not in Washington D.C. and not in New York City to have a not say and to yes. and to run the party from where we are locally, and that yes. is okay. Absolutely. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to register as a Democrat. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to cheer when the convention is on TV. Doesn't mean I don't consider myself a member of a larger movement. Right. Uh, it just means that. The way we operate politics is going to be decentralized, and which is fine. That, that's there's a there's a feminist element to that that I'm not going to go into, but really that's that's what's going on. Women are taking over. Black women, people of color, and and local activists who do the work are taking over, and. But- but that's honey, that's what about, a healthy thing. What about white guys like me? Will white guys like me have a place in the new Democratic Party? <laughs> of course. No, no, of course not. <laughs> yes, you do. But oh, but you're in you're in Springfield, Illinois. You're not you're not sitting in some K Street or whatever street it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, Washington D.C. think tank area, oh. making uh, major decisions about and and yes. The Democratic Party raises big money, and hopefully, you know, the folks that are there now are going to invest that in a 50-state strategy. I certainly hope so. Uh, but we have a 50-state strategy. It's called yeah. the resistance, and we're going right. to do it. So, right. Well, and, and here's here's the thing I, I never – here's the thing I, I heard like I never quite get past. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I talk to people – in Springfield, as you know, many, many, many people, lots of people, lots of liberal people, lots of people I presume are liberal because sometimes the social venue does not lend itself to, you know, flipping your collar over and showing your union button or your right. or your uh, your French resistance ring from uh, Casablanca. But, you know, you can sort of pick this stuff up. And yet I, I, I really do run across way too many people who are just I don't want to be a member of any party. Mm hmm. You know, I don't want to be – I think parties are the problem. I just want to vote for the person. OK. Do you think the person, Barack Obama, would have been nominated by the Republican Party? You, you do understand why parties exist, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They organize people into into groups that can get shit done. That's the that's only why, purpose, right. That's the only purpose. And they are private organizations. They're not exclusive. Anybody can join. Mm-hmm. But people who you – know, I'm a member of – I'm a member of Mensa. You are. Uh, You're not supposed to brag about that. I'm I'm not bragging. I'm citing it as a as a um, and I've worked at a college or two in my life. 
Uh-huh. And I have interaction with the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. And to date, I have not heard anyone at Mensa say, you know, we need, you know, we'll make this this organization better. If we let people who aren't in Mensa come in and make decisions for us. Mm-hmm. You know, it would be great about the Chamber of Commerce for Springfield. You know, it would be, it would be really cool for, for that we should do. Let people who don't own businesses and are not in our community come in and tell us how to run our fucking organization. Mm-hmm. I have never heard any other organization say the cure for what ails us is to let people who who aren't even minimally interested in what we are or what we do uh, in the door and then let them tell us how we're a bunch of fuck ups and how we should change without any investment of time, any investment of money, any investment of anything. And when everything doesn't go their way, they'll pout and go away. Yes, or, let's get those or, people. as I said to a young man on Twitter last night, oh. I said, uh, you can fuck without being married, but it's not the same. No. No, it's not. <laughs> and, no, it's not. and that... That really is the point, is what is your commitment? Mm -hmm. If your commitment is I want free college and free and legal pot and and, and not I don't want to create a straw man here because there are people, you know, we're we're a Bernie Sanders household. We've uh, supported him. I drink coffee from a Bernie Sanders mug and send kids to school in Bernie Sanders T-shirts. And uh, that's not. I, I'm not considering uh, – I want the Democratic Party to move left, and I'm part of that process. Right. Let me say right. that. Uh, however, this this idea, as you say, that um, I'm going to come in and uh, use all of the uh, election judges that are Democrats, the uh, signature uh, people that count and verify the signatures who are Democrats uh, – all of the people that do the invisible grunt work right. to make sure a primary happens, mm-hmm. I'm not going to do any, I'm going to be little red hen. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm here to bust the system and tell you that your party is shit right. and uh, bring about the revolution. And that, right. and that's, I don't have to do any of the work. And that is no offense, but that is a young male thing to do. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. And, and, it's, and I was a young male, and I believed that shit when I was 20 and 21. Mm-hmm, and I, mm-hmm. I believe in the in the principles of it. But I, I still I cannot get out of my head the fact that Bernie Sanders, who has many good ideas and brought many people into the political process, got people excited, which are all tremendously important things, said, I will run from now on as a Democrat because I want to, you know, I, that's what I'll run as in on in the future. Because and now that. He's running for re-election. Are you going to run as a Democrat? No, because the Democratic Party sucks, and I'm going to make my revolution as an independent. Okay. Well, well okay, mm-hmm. fine, but shut up then. I mean, I'm really, I'm really, I would like to know if you want to be an independent and run as an independent at a national level, go with Matthew Dowd, and go with David Brooks, and go with Joe Lieberman, mm-hmm. and go with all the the people on the right who think the 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 Republican Party isn't fascist enough. Yep. All of whom call themselves independents. Right. right. And make your own little independent party over there and see what it gets you. See what you get accomplished. Do you care about anything? You, you care about health care. You care about colleges. You care about um, um, middle class uh, uh, tax breaks. You care about raising the minimum wage. I care about those things, too. Those things get changed by Congress and with the signature of the president of the United States. Which we're if, finding out, if you haven't noticed, in the past mm-hmm. nine months— uh, although they're they're woefully incompetent at it, mm-hmm. uh, if you want to get something done, you have to you have to own these institutions. Yes, you do, uh, and then you have in to, charge of them. <laughs> and then you have to have the intelligence and the money. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm talking to you, Tom Steyer, who who dropped ten million dollars on a vanity commercial about impeaching Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. You know not what? That we do don't with... agree with impeaching yeah. Donald Trump. That's right. not the point. I, you know, <laughs> spend ten bucks by a yard sign and then take a picture of it. And then put it up on Facebook, and that'll it'll have the same net effect on the outcome as your ten million dollar commercial. You know what you could do with ten million dollars? You could register voters. <laughs> you know, you could build liberal messaging infrastructure. You could turn a bunch of little uh, bloggers and podcasters into the liberal version of Fox News and Breitbart. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. It'll require a little bit more investment. Hey, ten million won't cut it. Fine, take the fifty million we pissed away in a doomed Georgia special election. And spend that on something clever and long term. So you have to you have to control the Congress. You have to control the courts. You have to have a clear and succinct and 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 straightforward message. And it is sufficient. I'm going to tell you this right now, Blue Gal. It is sufficient 
to say, I'm going to vote for a Democrat because Donald Trump is fucking crazy and dangerous and the Republican Party is a disease and we need to contain it as much as possible. It's, it's sufficient to say, you know what? You and I might disagree. The French underground and the Russians and the Americans might disagree about a whole lot of shit, but we all agree the Third Reich needs to go down. Mm -hmm. So let's settle our differences after the immediate existential threat to our democracy is solved, as opposed to bitching at each other in the foxhole about who gets to charge out and which weapon we're going to use and which direction we're going to take. No, let's get rid of the threat first and then hash out what we're going to do about college and pot, etc. I, I don't understand. I don't understand how people who deeply care about the system can't get it through their fucking heads that there's a Congress, there's courts, and there's the White House, and, and there's the media. It is truly the fourth branch of government. And unless liberals start spending real fucking money and real fucking attention on winning those things, nothing you want is ever going to happen. In fact, you're going to keep losing, and we're going to keep going backwards. And Donald but Trump but I do think there are people focused on that. I really I, do. And, I, I, and I do there too. is a lot of, again, so much of this work is invisible. Recruiting yes. candidates is invisible. Yeah. And finding those women who are Democrats and veterans at the same time, which is the magic ticket apparently now, um, you know, Iraq war veterans who are moms and have health care issues. I mean, that's who you want running for a house seat and uh, and have had some business experience. I mean, that's the perfect ticket to get uh, people off their off their butts and into the voting booth mm -hmm. for you, for your party. And recruiting those folks is work and, and it takes time and mm -hmm. uh, it's not easy sometimes. So I but it's invisible. You don't see it. You just see the announcement. The, the signatures have been filed and you're done. You know, there's this candidate who all of a sudden has a campaign going. There's so much work that goes on before that. And it's the work of party members usually who do that sort of thing. Locally. So, yeah. And you're making a commitment at that point. So and it is about commitment. That I, I'm going to go back to that over and over again. It's about committing to this election and then as i've said many times you know chop wood carry water after the election chop wood carry water the next day you're doing more uh, grassroots work and organizing and getting people to do stuff mm -hmm. uh, i wanted to thank uh, boswood on twitter who uh, very kindly <laughs> tweeted us this morning and said i've extended your deadline yeah. <laughs> for the pro left podcast to 10 p.m tonight to yeah. account for the 65% probability of new indictments. Yeah. Um, we don't have that kind of schedule. <laughs> well, I, I, I tweeted him back a little clip from uh, True Detective. Oh, you did? Because uh, Thursday's when I do my drinking. <laughs> so I, I got to make a beer run. If we're going to do this, I got to make a beer run. I got to make a beer run. Or you go get me some beer. <laughs> Nothing and I snooty. love the story that here. I love the story that Ten Grain uh, reminded us of this morning as well, that... Um, my my favorite character in all of this now is Sam Clovis, yes. who uh, was not qualified. You know, he was another unqualified Trump appointee for the USDA. Uh, his his qualification was uh, for for to hold the scientific office. This was a, a science, science office. The, his science qualifications man. were he's from Iowa and he sure likes bacon. So right. those two things got him, and and he was co-chairman of the Trump campaign. Uh, he was also the supervisor. I'm a supervisor <laughs> of uh, Papadopoulos, and he also brought Carter Page into the campaign. So you know he's got that eye for recruiting just the right people uh, to work for Donald Trump. And apparently last week, um, Mr. Clovis uh, testified before the grand jury, and the White House found out about it through the media. So uh, Mr. Mueller is running an extraordinarily tight ship. Mm -hmm. When Trump's people, um, you mean they don't need Trump's permission to go and testify? Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, well, 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 to his credit, in, in little known fact, yeah. uh, Mr. Clovis was also um, Jackie Gleason's stunt double <laughs> in, in Smokey and the Bandit and Smokey and the Bandit 2. So he does have some experience, you know, treading the boards and being in front of people and saying lines that other people write for him. <laughs> that is a huge insult to Jackie Gleason because I'm a huge Jackie Gleason fan. Oh yeah. Uh, who, who whose Minnesota fats will never be uh, equaled on stage, oh, and who's a highly underrated actor. Yep. But yeah, no, he's a comic book character. These are all fucking comic book characters. Yeah. Yeah. 
These are all people who whose whose personal profiles and goofy, you know, off the wall behavior, a completely unacceptable um, shit that pours out of their mouth is cartoonish. That's why mm-hmm. it's so, you know, that's why it's so odd. It's not that there's one of them. They're all freaks like this. Mm-hmm. You know, you think this is bad. Watch Ben Carson get roasted um, in front of in front of the uh, housing committee last week. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. couldn't answer a single fucking question. He just sit there, get a blink in his sleepy eyes, uh, mumbling about, uh, I don't know nothing about anything. And just got creamed. And this is the head of the Housing and Urban Development Department. This is a cabinet yeah. member who doesn't – and all of them are this way. Yep. And they're all fucking criminals. And if, if looking at that band of thieves and liars and imbeciles and crackpots running your country is not sufficient for you to vote for the other guy, then you have a problem. Yep. Yep. Uh What do you want to start with today, Drift Glass? Oh, Jesus, I don't know. I, I'm Mark Halperin, uh, as you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, is having a real good week because all the rest of this shit cover, you know, has sort of swept past the fact that Mark Halpern uh, is apparently grabby Mark Halpern uh, mm-hmm. and got fired. Didn't just mm-hmm. get uh, laid off, but apparently got fired, which means I still say we'll be, he'll be on Fox within a month. Yep, yep. I'll bet you he will. I'll He's, bet you he they will. Because they can't rehire Bill O'Reilly. Nope. But they, can we get a Bill O'Reilly type? Someone who's got <laughs> even less personality and is more robotic and creepy, <laughs> but who Glenn Beck likes – yeah. And who yeah. we can say, you know, made a few mistakes in his youth and it was a youthful indiscretion, blah, 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 and put him on the air and know that he'll have an audience that will follow him. Yep. So I still think that Mark Halpern, I'm not saying bet the rent money on it, but I'm saying bet the beer money on it. Mm-hmm. That Mark Halpern will show up in one full Halpern, Halpern maybe two, uh, on Fox somewhere as a consultant. Has, and Fox has, has brought, you know, Fox News this week, this week and last had Pam fucking Geller. Unbelievable. Sepp Gorka. Um, Newt Gingrich and and their regular sheriff, you know, little big big hat, little head clerk, mm-hmm. uh, who lets people die of thirst in his prison, right. in his jail, all on as experts to talk about uranium. Um, yeah. I got you know under under Roger Ailes, it never would have gotten this bad. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say Pam Geller is a blogger. She is le- less of a talented blogger than I am, and, and I, I, I'm not patting my. And crazy, she's crazy. Ra- and she's and a she's crazy, crazy racist, racist bitch. Yep, yep. And that's all she is. That's literally all that's she is. That's her and qualification she... is when Muslim kills someone in New York, that's yeah. the blow the call into Pam Geller to come on and be anti-Islamic. Yeah. And, and, and uh, here's the thing. They have a delivery system for people like this. Mm-hmm. There is a There is a consistent, clear, reliable channel of filth and lies and poison that conservatives have. That they just plug these people into without without worrying about whether or not it's going to offend someone or bother someone or whether they're liars or whether they're racist or whether they're just fucking nuts. It doesn't matter. It's just keep the poison pumping into the conservative veins. Right. We yeah, on the left I, have... I want to I interrupt you about that. The poison going into the conservative veins. I want I want to talk about that because I have a question for you. Of course. Uh, I was thinking about this this morning, um, complimenting Donald Trump for something, okay. and that is. Uh, Never stop campaigning. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. And what I mean by that, and I, I was listening to, you know, right, whatever, POTUS radio, whatever it was on. I mean, I suggest a different way of putting it. Yeah. Always be closing. Always be closing. Well, but always being in campaign mode from the day you're elected. And mm-hmm. there is a corruption level to that of fundraising as a campaigner and then using that money to fund your kids' legal bills, legal defense. And, you know, that's the irony here is Donald Trump is screaming about Hillary's uh, takeover of the Democratic Party uh, and it being rigged and so forth when she paid Barack Obama's debts off at the DNC, basically. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, you know... Uh, said, and I get control of the party for that, for that money. Um, now that you can say that's corrupt and we can write rules to make that not happen again. Yeah. But uh, that means that the party's in debt. So it's it. And I, I agree with self-reflection and seeing how things are done differently. This doesn't have anything to do with Bernie. As far as I'm concerned, this has to do with how the parties run. Right. Uh, you know, Bernie had his own problems with uh, his campaign before New Hampshire getting data that didn't belong to them and having to apologize for that. And, uh, you know, it was a mess. There was a lot of things going on that were a mess. Right. Um, and and self-reflection and fixing those things so that there is a no, more transparent and open process is a good thing. It is a poorly uh, run organization. Yeah. And, and it the, the people, let's face it, 
Debbie Wasserman Schultz should not have been chairman of the Democratic no. Party. No. <laughs> all right. Uh, but all that aside, never stop campaigning. The fact I, Donald Trump is crazy and Donald Trump is tweeting now about crooked Hillary, who is never going to run for office again as long as she lives. Well, l- let's be let's be clear. Since this is a Friday around noon, mm-hmm. he's tweeting about crooked Hillary, crazy Bernie and Pocahontas. Yeah. OK. So he's doing the whole thing. He's, he's, right. he's, he's letting against it... Democrats. Right. Right. And if the next Democratic president uh, would keep in mind to, first of all, I just wish the next Democratic president would take as much attention, pay as much attention to the Democratic base as Donald Trump is paying to the Republican base. Yes. The Republican base is all Donald Trump has. And and, they, and he has him for life. And he has him for life. Right. You know, that 32 percent, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if the next Democratic president pays attention to his base... And because, as you say, that 32 percent isn't going anywhere. That Fox News zombies, nope. that has been boiled down to the ore. Right. right. That's there's there's no there's no breaking that apart anymore. These were the same dead enders who backed George Bush till the day he left who backed office. And Nixon, then, who backed and then, Nixon when he, he resigned. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, no. And, and then put on funny hats and said they'd never heard of George Bush. Right. Right. So th- it's and, all and the as same you people. said, who now tell pollsters, even if Donald Trump did get help from the Russians, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. So let's let's get over the fact that the next I think you were going with the de- next Democratic president. I, the, next, I think- the next Democratic president ne- needs to come before the cameras. And when he's talking about his or her plan for affordable housing, say, you know, the Republican Party of Trump doesn't want to do that. Right. And, you know. I understand there are some people that want to go back to the Trump days and cut these kind of programs, but mm-hmm. we're not going to do that. We're going to enhance and make it make mo- affordable housing more available. Right. Yeah, we're, you know, yeah, we can go back to the ba- days of Betsy DeVos and privatizing education, but we're not going to do that because we ha- have value public education and equality for students. And so we're going to in this direction and just hammer that, you know, the party of Trump, the party of Trump, because believe me. <laughs> Believe me, they the, someone uh, else tweeted tweeted me this week and said, "Have you noticed that uh, the lifeboats that are being built?" Uh-huh. And David Frum is, yep. you know, head lifeboat builder. He is. He it's, is. It is crazy, and and it is blatant. Yes. And uh, we see you, David well, Frum. <laughs> well, in the Washington Post a couple of days ago, Jennifer Rubin was talking about how Donald Trump, blah blah blah, and Donald Trump is sucks dick, and Donald Trump is a monster. And, you know, even respected establishment conservatives like George Will and Bill Kristol. And I just went, nope, nope. lost me right there, right there, because that's what you're doing. You were trying to normalize the people who created the the predicate for this monster. Right. You're trying to you're trying to re, you're trying to reset your party back to when you and Bill Kristol and George Will uh, could all get away with calling liberals traitors mm-hmm. with a wink and a nut. And and here's something that here's a really important lesson for the next. Let's, we'll call this um, maybe podcast the next republic, uh, next Democratic president. The working title for this podcast was a low level part time volunteer president that no one ever heard of. <laughs> because that's the next step in all this. No yeah, one's ever heard yeah. of Donald Trump. Donald Trump's never heard of Donald and Trump. That, Donald that Trump's never heard of Donald Trump. That is literally the next step. Absolutely. Yeah. I have no and, idea who this Donald Trump fella is. And if you want to get a MAGA person who's being really obnoxious to block you, remind uh-huh. them that they voted for Sarah Palin for vice president. Yeah, yeah. Now, so here's my advice to the next Democratic president. This is another thing that I have uh, tweeted and sent along and communicated to the crooked media people, which is shouting down the well. That's, that does, It doesn't matter. But those guys are all Obama speech writers and policy guys. The next Democratic president cannot spend his first months in office courting the good opinion of George Will right. and – Bill David Crystal Brooks. and yeah. Dave Brooks, which yep. is all Barack Obama did. He yep. cannot say, you know, it was really stupid. It's really stupid to arrest Skip Gates in his own home and then have to go have a beer summit because he called something a cop did stupid and had to apologize for it. He can't fire um, uh, uh, Jones, I want to say, yep. and Jones. for, for yep. He can't fire Shirley Sherrod for doing right. nothing. You right. can't be fucking timid around these people. Nope. You know what? The only thing the next Democratic president needs to take away from this is the more you kick the Beltway media in the balls, the, the more, more they, they will love you, the more they will <laughs> capitulate to you. Yep. The more yep. you try to find a reasonable middle ground, the more they will shit on you. Donald Trump and the Republican Party can put up obvious lunatics 
obvious lying racist lunatics to lie to your face, to piss on you. And you'll invite Paul Ryan on and listen to him as if he were some sage who had secret maths that you just don't understand as as opposed to a lying con man. Mm -hmm. They will never respect the left, ever. So you might as well sort of lean into that and start off your presidency with um, beating the shit out of Chuck Todd. Yeah. You know, have, yeah. have a press conference and say, hey, Chuck, how many different ways did you normalize that lying sack of shit who preceded me? Because we're going to have to spend the, a, a year in this office just getting the scum off the walls from the last administration. They're well, degen- and, and Chuck Todd yesterday on Meet the Press Daily said in a normal Washington, D.C., Jeff Sessions would be in big trouble. Right. Why do you think it's not normal? And the day before well, that, it's had, not normal had, because Chuck Todd is normalizing Jeff Sessions being a lying racist sack of shit. And, and the day before that, he has Corey Lewandowski on, mm-hmm. on his so, show. So yeah. it is. It is. This is. I, I don't know who to write to about this, other than <laughs> maybe blogging about it for another thirteen years or podcasting yeah. about it for another yeah. seven years, because you know that this is as far as our we can go with our limited resources. But please, for fuck's sake, if you if you don't learn anything else from the Trump disaster Mm -hmm. learn that the beltway media hates liberals they hate your class because they hate you could be the next you could be the next democratic president steve bannon yeah calling him on the phone all the time and tell him no fight harder fight harder don't 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 give in to these people no and And, and, (laughs) consent to an interview and just just lean into him put your finger right in chuck todd's chest and call him you know a dirty rotten collaborator you suck at your job chuck you are awful. You, you're a fucking disgrace to your profession. You are the reason why people think there's fake news. And you know what? You'd be right. Here's mm-hmm. the thing. If you went after the Beltway media the same way that Donald Trump goes after the Beltway media, but using actual facts as opposed to, I had bigger crowds, anyone who says different is lying. If you yeah. went act- after them with actual presentable reality, look, it's Hugh Hewitt on television for no fucking reason anybody can lame. Here's look. It's Newt Gingrich who's back on TV for. Isn't he a lying, grifting sack of shit, Chuck? Why is he on your show all the time? If you actually, in a, from a position of power and authority and influence, and you can't ignore me because just because I'm right and a liberal and a blogger, but you actually have some clout, you would have enormous success. You your your base would galvanize behind you. And but that's you the have, point. Yeah. But you have to stop sucking up to people. Who hate you? And well, are, and you th- just, yeah, exactly. You think you think you're going to somehow bring America together? There's no. 32 percent of the United States of America that is mesmerized I and is when, not coming back. When Barack Obama would talk about the fever breaking, it's not a fever; it's a yeah. chronic illness. Yep. And the only way to con- to cure it is to contain it and just let it die off naturally. And, Put it, and you know, shame them. Yeah. No, they can't into, shame them. Into sh- no, I think you can shame them into blocking you. Oh yeah, that, that, that I works think on Twitter. Yeah. That works on Twitter, but in yeah. the real world, where people vote, you're not going to convince these people to stop being traitors and morons and stop listening to Sheriff Clark and to Seb Gorka and to Pam Geller. They're never going to do that. So get it through your head that that, that conservatism, republicanism, is a chronic disease. And the way you deal with chronic diseases is you contain you can't cure it because it's too it's too late for that. It's way too late for that. But you can contain it. So the the Democratic Party process needs to be one of pointing at Republicans and saying, that's the problem. The problem with the Republican Party is full of fucking Republicans. And the only way to cure it is to make sure those people don't get anywhere near power ever again. And Drift Class, I am grateful to note that uh, as this goes on, Fox News more and more becomes the story. Yeah, they really do because they're uh, they so really bad. They really do. Hannity so... and Hannity and Tucker are uh, just enabling and colluding. They are they are they might as well be Russian moles, and maybe they are, but they are uh, making this presidency possible over and over and over again, and lying in a way that comforts Vladimir Putin. Yes, they and, are, and and have like you said, the guests they have on. Uh, sack of liars and people are noticing in the mainstream media and and tell talk about the video you showed me last night <laughs> where an msnbc host right yes. i mean she's on the 11th hour nicole wallace nicole wallace former campaign manager uh for, for john palin, mccain <laughs> palin campaign yeah who basically cut off a trump guy uh and said basically you know 
I will call Fox News and arrange a booking for you if you want to lie to if you want to lie for a living. But we're not going to put up with that shit here. What you just said isn't true. You know it's not true. And made him stutter and stammer and kind of look like, how dare you treat me this way? I'm don't you know who I am? Don't you know what this is? This is a puppet show. I come on, I tell my lies, you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you have someone on after me, maybe David Korn, maybe somebody else who everybody knows. You run through your Rolodex, we go we go at each other, then we go home, and we all get paid. You're not no, supposed we, go, to we go on to a plaque psoriasis commercial, because yes. that's the purpose of the show, yes. is to fill space between pharma commercials. The, the, the dick pill ads. Especially 11th Hour. You watch 11th Hour and count the number of commercials that are about medicine, yeah. as opposed to... Because anybody up at that hour is clearly... <laughs> Has bad knees and bad skin and bad digestion and whatever else. Or and our liberal bloggers who are doing their own. N- no money to do anything, right? right. right. But the, the point being, the point is qu- quite correct. Um, she broke script, yes, like she did. just like Joy Reid does on a regular basis. You're not supposed to call me a liar to my face and then point out how factually wrong I am and then insult me. That's While not I'm lying fair. to you. That's not fair. That's not how we play this game. This game is supposed to. Everyone knows the rules of this game. Because it's a game, it's a performance. I I, I went through my um, I went through my uh, uh, archives mm-hmm. just to see how many times I had written about Donna Brazil. I have yes. never written about Donna Brazil. Yep. Ever. Yep. I have included her um, dialogue and mentions when I'm doing a Sunday morning thing. Here's all the people who are on the Sunday morning shows, and here's this, and here's that. I've I've you know I've noted what she said uh, because it was part of a larger dialogue, but I've never actually written about it. But I did find something from like 2015 or 2014 where she says, look, it's a performance. Yep. I've gotten really good. I, I play the role of the left person and you, and she's talking to the person, in the literature, you play the role of the center person. And that's why they invite us on these shows we, to play these roles. We know it's a performance. We know we're acting. That's what we do. And the, the, and that's what everyone involved thinks of. They don't, I don't think anyone uh, with a few rare exceptions thinks uh, who puts these things on thinks of what they're doing as the news. They yeah. think of it as a, a drama, mm-hmm. a kitchen sink drama where you cast it just like you cast professional wrestling or just like you cast yeah. stranger things. You cast it because I want someone who will say these lines at this moment and these lines at this moment. And then people come along. Uh, frankly, like Joy Reid and like Nicole Wallace increasingly and Chris Hayes and, and Rachel Maddow when she, you know, after a half an hour of explaining what she's going to talk about. <laughs> um, and we uh, love her for that. I mean, it's we relaxing. <laughs> but they, they do break the rule. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. they actually, you know, cut across and say, Lawrence but O'Donnell what has said. done that from time to time too. Yes. kick people off the, his show for, you know, he, he very famously kicked Orly Tate's off his show yeah. and just said, no, you're a crazy person. We're, I'm, I apologize to my audience. We're done. We're not having her on anymore. And, and next day he had, you know, David Frum on with oh, George. Oh, sure. <laughs> so, you know, to make – I, I swear to God, I swear, if you go into MSNBC, somewhere in there, there's a there's a, um, um, accounting system. A scorekeeping, yes, and, yes. And, and you have, if you want to have, you know, Elizabeth Warren on, you have to, you know, put three conservatives on. There is a balance sheet somewhere. Mm-hmm. And you pay off your ability to have on interesting people with your ability to sit through Hugh Hewitt nattering on about nonsense uh, without punching him in the face. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. the deal. But that tells me what you're watching is not news. It's a performance. It's a puppet show. Well, and I, I, I do know why Hugh Hewitt is on. Hugh Hewitt is on because he has uh, a, a level of respect above InfoWars. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is a lawyer. Right. Um, he's a Californian and, he's and he has connections. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He has he does. connections. And he gives puff interviews on his radio program to Republicans. And in exchange for that, they give him insider information as to who's going to be appointed to what, who's going to who's going to. So he's more uh, Calper. The next person. Yeah, it's it's and it's it's Rolodex and data and who is willing to talk to you off the record that gets you on TV. Also, so, I hear he's going to be Ben Dominic's best man. No. No, I'm, I'm lying. But I, but, I'm, but I might be telling the truth. Yes. You, might, you don't know. <laughs> Breaking news here. Uh, for all you people out there, uh, Ben Dominic, as you probably know, or Dominic, uh, who worked for the worst climate change denial hack shop in America, because it was in Illinois, and I know him, and who, who's, who uh, got in trouble for plagiarizing and a bunch of other shit, uh, and who never sank. 
because he was a conservative writer who looks good on television. And so there was this conservative, as we call the wingnut welfare system, kept him afloat for a long time. And uh, two of the people who were most responsible for his being accepted by the mainstream Sunday show media for showing up on Meet the Press and showing up on and have really raising his profile are uh, Ezra Klein and mm -hmm. Chris Hayes, who yep. kept having him on. And yep. we kept asking, why are you having this obvious <laughs> Liar. Because they have a lot in common they besides politics. Well, I understand that. Politics. I yeah. understand that, but it, it really does show me that what you're doing is not news. You're right. putting on a show, and the show requires, according to your boss, whoever that is, a person to sit in the seat who, feeds, fit, uh, who meets these qualifications. Right. And so we laugh and we joke and we laugh and we joke, and now he's got a profile high enough to carry his lies to the next level and marry Meghan McCain. Yes, he's going to marry Meghan McCain. You know, and, and that's going to shake up the political world as much as Drift Glass marrying Blue Gal. Well, even more so. There's a saying about um, marrying, <laughs> but marrying the commandant's daughter. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's how you yeah. get, that's how you really get ahead uh, in, in the core. You you marry, and and that's what he's done. He's married the commandant's daughter, so he's secure. He's set for life. He's now, or he's going to be a member of the McCain. Well, yeah, she's an heiress, so yeah. she's she's got all more money than God, so she's yeah. all, they're all set. Anyway, uh, let's, let's move along, shall we? We need to. Speaking of uh, wingnut welfare, we need to talk about Robert Mercer for yes, a minute. Yes, we do. Let's let's do that. Because this is kind of a weird story. Yeah. To my mind, uh, yesterday Robert Mercer just and we're recording on Friday. Yes. Robert right Mercer just checked out of yeah. everything. Uh, he is no longer uh, owner of Breitbart News. He's no longer uh, having any ties whatsoever with Milo Yiannopoulos. Uh, he's not uh -huh. leading his his hedge fund anymore. He's retiring from that, and uh, it's pretty to me. It's pretty clear that uh, he got a letter from Bob Mueller <laughs> because he and his daughter are very involved in Cambridge Analytica. Yeah, which, uh, was a data you know farm for uh, Donald Trump, the Breitbart, and and for Breitbart, right, and. And Carolee at Crooks and Liars has had her eye on Cambridge Analytica for years, that these guys are really dangerous, that they're going to sneak into people's Facebook accounts and leave misinformation. And, you know, they clearly don't have no problem lying on the Internet. Right. Uh, and so uh, all of uh, Robert Mercer's uh, shares in Breitbart News are being sold to Rebecca Mercer, his daughter. His daughter. Who's correct? Who's who, crazy? I think is the is the problem, yeah. right? I think right. she's the one who's kind of behind a lot of this. Yeah. And I'm not saying that Robert Mercer doesn't agree with Breitbart and have sympathies for the right wing nut jobs, but uh, Rebecca is is a true believer, right? And uh, it's a faith with her. So and it's a dynasty. And it's a dynasty. And she is also the one who uh, wanted Cambridge Analytica to uh, clean up emails for mm -hmm. distribution, you know, that that was going to be their job. So uh, they're in it up to their crotches and it's not going to be pretty. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that uh, congressional hearing where they had the lawyers from Facebook and Twitter and so social media companies before them and showed the big posters of the fake ads mm -hmm. uh, probably, uh, triggers something and also you know it's very possible we don't we don't know who goes before this grand jury sam clovis went before this grand jury nobody knew about it so uh there's a tight ship being run there and he's involved so this is this is a tr uh kind of a what's the word i'm looking for it's a harbinger of things to yes. come. Right? oh and, and it, there is a massive amount of this is this is a fight among crackpot right-wing billionaires Mm -hmm. Over who gets to run the drones uh, at the base of the party, yep. and 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 which um, incredibly anti-democratic, dangerous, corrupt, plutocratic um, uh, item on the agenda will get handled first. Mm -hmm. And that's all this is. This is a fight between very, very, very rich people on the right over who gets to break the country uh, and who gets like a pinata and who will mm -hmm. collect the prizes once the country's broken. Yep. And and at the other end, can I can I jump to the other end of that spectrum really quick? Sure. Um, the, a story caught my eye this week uh, about a coal miner uh, in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. that was like a perfect little jewel, a perfect little summary of the mind of the Republican voter 
and why the Republican Party is doomed. Um, coal miner in Pennsylvania uh, ignoring 100 federally funded job training programs so that he can take coal mining classes. <laughs> um, because, it, he, because he knows coal's coming back because he trusts Donald Trump. Right, right. And right. I, and I wrote a, a kind of a long post about it, uh, not a really, really long one, but I, I used to do that for a living, not coal mining. I used to set up job training programs. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, here's the thing about federal job training programs. They're grossly underfunded. There's never enough money. It's, it's like 20 to 1 uh, short of the need. So for mm -hmm. every person you help, you know, 20 or 30 are going to go begging who, who actually could use your help. Um, and it's it's incredibly hard to do because you're balancing a whole bunch of different priorities. You're trying to help um, ex-offenders, let's say, and people who are homeless. And they require a lot more resources. But mm -hmm. you have a limited number of dollars. So you have to decide, well, how many people who require an enormous amount of help do I help? Because that's my right. social mission. But all these other people who I could be finding jobs for relatively easy or training relatively easy are now not going to find jobs. Right. So there's all right. these you know, conflicting um, um, economic priorities, social priorities, political priorities. And you're always trying to find the right mix, the right balance. I was going to say one of the things that in in the process of hiring that I, the hiring that I've done in various social welfare organizations is the big dividing line is whether a person has a DUI or not. Yeah. Because yeah. if they have DUI problems and they've lost their license, their ability to just get to training yeah. or show up for work or reliably uh, be a reliable employee is gone. Right. And if you're trying to help those people compared with a single mom who may have had a couple typing classes and knows how to answer a phone pleasantly, uh -huh. and you can get her a car or you can get her some sort of, uh, you know, welfare to get her trans you, reliable transportation. You can get her reliable. You can get her a, yeah. a clothing for meetings. You can get her a, a right. transportation. You can get her child from care. Other agencies. Yeah. From other agencies, you know, and, and your job as a government employee depends upon reliably placing people in jobs that they, where they last six months. Right. That's no, your job. And nobody asks you at, at the federal funding level, how many ex-offenders did you help? They, no, they, they give you care. a number. Your, your job is to place 10,000 people this year. Right, right. Um, and, and how you mix and blend that is your problem. And um, you have that com compelling need mm -hmm. to help ex-offenders. You yes. really want to do that. Absolutely. You really want to help the guy who lost his driver's license because he was laid off and got right. drunk right. and drove, right? I mean, those that that is such a typical uh path that people go down of, I got laid off today, I went and got drunk, I drove, I lost my license. And, and, you know, that, and here's the thing. When boom, you're, boom, when boom, you're, boom, all in one day, right? When you're running those programs, you're, you're juggling, and I, I believe me, I juggled all of those and many, many, many other variables, and I had 20 other responsibilities, so I, I used to work a lot of hours <laughs> um, until the Great Recession came, and I joined the unemployed and have remained there ever since, um, or underemployed. But the fact of the matter is that everyone I worked with was was trying to find the right balance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the most unconscionably <laughs> shitty thing you could do with those incredibly limited federal dollars is to fund some shitty training program that is never going to get anybody a job, is never going to lead anywhere, and gives people false hope who desperately need to be told that, that, that your industry is dying and you need to go do something else now. Mm -hmm, so the idea that mm -hmm. there is a coal mining training program being federally funded anywhere is fucking evil. Yep. And the fact that that program looped in this guy and let him in and gave him your tax dollars to get even more coal mining training for an industry that is dying yep. because yep. he had a fantasy that it's coming back because Donald Trump lied to him and he's dumb enough to believe it. That whole that whole concatenation of events and decisions is all unconscionable. Yep. And it's all the result at the other end of the spectrum of the Mercers and the Cokes and, yep. and Fox News and Breitbart and hate radio pumping these insane, racist, horrifying lies into the body politic for decades. Right. So right. you end up with people who, who, who are completely bereft, have no options and really want to just go back into the 40s, <laughs> who mm -hmm. really, really think that, you know, I remember my dad had a pretty good career as a buggy whip maker. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's what I, I could be a cowboy. I, I could, I could, I could, you know, open a gondola um, 
rental service on Mars. Because that'd be fun because everyone knows there's canals on Mars and all of those things are delusional, childish fantasies. But they're all put in this in these people's heads by people who are lying to them for a reason. Yep. The reason this guy thinks the coal is coming back is because Donald Trump told him that. And the reason Donald votes. Trump told him yep. that was to get his votes so he could take this guy's health insurance away, gut this man's schools, gut this man's future, mortgage yep. his children's future, and give all the money to the Mercers and the Cokes. And put, put Medicare on a, on a collision course uh, over the sequester. You know, you know Medicare is going to be part of the sequester now. Right. So... Because uh, Mercers need money, need they need those tax cuts. So and when you talk to people like this, mm -hmm. you can't talk to them about HR four eight three and nope. the tax code. You have to slap them and say, "What the fuck is your problem? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. the fuck is your problem? How how dumb do you have to be not to get this? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes a little tough love at the local level is what's called for, and and less policy wonk talk about marginal tax rates and who will benefit and who will not. And, and no, 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 no. You need, as Democrats and liberals, we need to get very clear and specific and simple with our language. I admired mm -hmm. a Barack Obama's ability as an orator. It was breathtaking to behold. Uh, and that's great. But you also have to be able to talk to people in blunt, clear, forceful language and not to change their mind because Mr. Coal Miner is never going to change his mind. But the people around him need to know that he's making horribly stupid mm -hmm. decisions. And there's a direct causal chain between the horrible things, his decisions and his delusions and that asshole racist in the White House. And that and that 60 million people put that asshole there and they made a decision to put him there. And their decisions were created in their minds as an inevitable outcome, as something they had to do as an existential uh, necessity by the Kochs and the Mercers and Breitbart and Fox and Hate Radio and Rush Limbaugh and enabled by Chuck Todd and Hugh yep. Hewitt and David Frum and all the rest. And that's what we're up against. So this let's do the let's do the weekend review drift class and then let's finish up. We got a lot right. to say. The weekend review, uh, Papadopoulos and Manafort's and Gates, so oh am I. Uh, so many indictments, all in one week, and perhaps more. Who knows? Um, it's no biggie, but now it's pretty plainly obvious that the Attorney General of the United States repeatedly committed perjury during his confirmation hearings. Thanks, Mr. Papadopoulos. And I do love Al Franken keeping a straight face and not cracking up when yep. when a reporter asks him. So do you think that uh, he's in trouble now or do you think he's what, – what are we going to do next with, with Jeff Sessions? Well, you said things that were not factually accurate. Mm -hmm. and. <laughs> You lied. And it's like... Under oath, repeatedly. And, and, yeah. And, and the, the thing that I think some people forget about that, too, is Jeff Sessions, the, the committee that he's going in front of, mm -hmm. he was chairman of that committee. This is the Judiciary Committee. Right. He was chairman of that committee for many, many years. And it is a personal thing, a personal affront to Mr. Leahy and Mr. Franken and all and all of the Republicans on that committee mm -hmm. that he's just sitting before him and fucking lying. And he grilled Democratic nominees. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Brutally and fine. And and if again, if the shoe were on the other foot, if Republicans weren't criminals and liars and complicit in the in the, in the havoc they're wreaking on this country. Mm -hmm. Um, they would right now, if nothing else, they would be impeaching um, Jeff Sessions. Yep. They would be hauling his ass in front of the committee yep. and trying yep. him for fucking perjury in yep. a heartbeat. But he's a Republican, so it doesn't count because he's a Republican. And that's a Democratic message that's easy to remember. The reason Jeff Sessions is not behind bars is because he's a Republican. Republicans are criminals right. and they protect right. and, their And homes, that's the period. next Democratic president needs to say that, you know, that the Republican Congress has – proven to themselves that they are thieves and liars and they have, don't care. And backed up Trump for their don't rich care. donors. And but no one, we're, we're not going to let them do that. Yeah. Uh, Rick ahead. Perry won this week's uh, <laughs> match, uh, with Cole Stops Rape. Yeah. Uh, apparently yeah. anthracite uh, has magic powers and one of which is to stop rape in Africa. American coal stops rape in Africa. That's just science, Blue Gal. That's just fucking science. <laughs> well, uh, and what you said, what you said, I, you know, the fact is that keeping the lights on in Africa does make nights safer for yes, women. I get does. that. Fine. But you said, you know, solar rape is not a thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, wind rape, wind power rape, the wind power lights go on too. It's not, it's no, not coal. a question. Wind and coal. solar's cheaper, folks, and better for the environment. And speaking anyway. of, uh, Speaking of future coal, 
Uh, as we know, uh, eventually in a few million years, the mortal remains of Robert E. Lee will will have become coal. <laughs> Um, suitable for burning and possibly stopping rape in Africa. I don't know. But in the here and now, John Kelly, you know, John, four star general Kelly, the adult in the room who's going to Who save no us one all is from crazy Donald general Trump. anymore, by the way. Uh, yep. Is now getting freaky with the mortal remains of Robert E. Lee. Yeah. He's rewriting the history of the Confederacy. He's talking about Robert E. Lee as a noble, honorable man. Uh, he's just, he, oh, really? That's why you have the job? Because you are also a fucking Confederate revisionist racist? Great. And why? the whole White House goes behind him. And they're all, they're all thrilled. On many sides, people are good. Yeah, many, okay. Many, sides. The many, many sides. So let's um, relearn the history of the Confederacy and also be aware of how Southerners talk about themselves mm -hmm. and have done so since the 1870s. You know who's right. not a, a moral person? Chuck Schumer, because Chuck Schumer personally led in terrorists in this country that attacked us and attacked America, mm -hmm. except he didn't. Mm -hmm. The yep. reflex action on the part of President Stupid to a terrorist attack in this country was blame Chuck fucking Schumer. Yep. Because that's how they roll, because blame Emmanuel Goldstein, because on the right, it's always 1984, and it's always two minutes hate, and we always have to find the liberal preferably with some sort of Jewish conf uh, yeah, inflection exactly. or perhaps black to blame for every one of our And problems. female. Don't yeah. forget female. Well, yeah. yeah, well, Chuck can't be all three of those he things. Can't but he can't be all three of those things. <laughs> anyway, um, that's pretty much it. I, I, I do want to bring up the fact that uh, the children's health insurance program is still expired. Yep. Uh, yep. That's five weeks ago. And we're going to just keep talking about it every week. Uh, does anybody remember Niger? Niger, anybody Niger, remember? Niger, 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 where four people died. I thought we were going to have like televised hearings and uh, make sure that there's a Fox News Chiron 24 7 with a flame and a thing and a four, the four dead soldiers on TV, Sean Hannity weeping over them for four years, like That's we sad. did with Benghazi. It's four people, it's four Americans. Hey, remember when President Stupid pardoned racist scumbag Joe Arpaio a, a year ago? Yeah. Except it yeah. wasn't a year ago. It was like six weeks ago, but that's that's gone now too. And remember Neil Niall Farage, Nigel Farage, yeah. whatever his name Nigel. is. Nigel, yeah. yeah. Uh, Turns out he's a Nazi too. Yeah, they're all they're all fucking yeah. evil. They're all evil. Yeah. They're all evil, and they're all together, and they're all happy to be together. And this is a great and clarifying moment in in Western civilization. All the bad people are in one place, and if it's not sufficient to you existentially to vote against the bad people, again. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, each week. Yeah, well, and and just so you know that the 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 moron known as Nigel Farage, mm -hmm. I had some things to say about the Jews. Of course, he that's <laughs> of course. Give him enough. Just give him enough time, Blue yeah. Gal. Give him yeah. enough time. So, you, you know, know who's, who's stopping the coal being shipped to Africa to help stop the, the rape? Jews? The Jews, <laughs> probably, probably, and Barack Obama. <laughs> And feminazis. And some, some black woman congressman from yeah. Florida, right? Damn her. <laughs> Damn her hide. Each week. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Katinka. Katinka's veterinarian estimates that she is 21 years old. Wow. Wow. Uh, she, cannot, she cannot see or hear very well anymore. But that works out great because Mr. Vacuum Cleaner doesn't bother yeah. her. I don't He's care. fine with it now. <laughs> she also finds the food bowl just fine. And uh, her her human says, we take every day with Katinka as a blessing. And I'm yes. sure you do. We have an old kitty, too. Yes, every day is a blessing. Uh, just keep them fed. That's the point. Uh, we, we just count it. Every day above ground is wonderful. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage and, you know, pumpkin spice latte season's over, right? Yeah. Uh, so, it, you know, get get that maple pecan one. Peppermint. And uh, think about peppermint. Think about how much that costs and send some money for one. For us yeah. to our 
to Watch Podcast. We'll put it to good use. Don't forget, Christmas is coming. Our Amazon link is at our website. We believe in buying local. We also believe in shopping Amazon with our link. If your alternative is a big box store and Amazon sells gift wrap and gift bags and tissue paper and all those things that you're probably going to buy oh my God. at you know a cheapo place, a big box, and if you order it, they'll just ship it to you and then that's done. And and, it's, and they have some really, really pretty ones, I have noticed. Uh, it's time to announce the latest winner of our beautiful bracelet or cuff from foxwise.biz. Yeah, there you go. That's my best drum That's roll. Your drum roll. On my little tiny desk here in front of my, my uh, closet. We, re- we received the first five uh, bracelets mm-hmm. from foxwise.biz to ship out. So now gorgeous. we're ready to go. The, par- the prizes are going out this week. Um, the one we're giving away says resist on it and it's gold and has snowflakes on either side along with our URL. Uh, I love them. They, they really look nice. Um, if you want to buy something from foxwise.biz, there is a link at our website. You can also just go to foxwise.biz and don't forget to use the coupon code DGBG2017 for 20% off anything, including custom orders. They will put a name uh, of a child or a grandmother or whatever on uh, an item. They have keychains and necklaces as well. Uh, foxwise.biz. This week's winner is Greg from Missouri. Hey, Greg. Greg, Greg sends us a check every month uh, through his bank, so he doesn't even pay postage to right. mail us money. Right. Uh, and uh, <laughs> he puts cornfield resistance on his check. Yes, he makes he does. the bank print cornfield resistance on the check. Boy. Anyway, his name came up, and I thought that was hilarious because mm-hmm. I could talk about, you know, cornfield resistance account and uh, appreciate that, Greg. You're the winner, and we're going to send you a cuff bracelet that says resist on it and a ten dollar gift certificate to donors choose where you can spend that money locally for supplies for a teacher that you decide should have that yeah approximately one percent of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution you can too see our website proleftpod.com for details both our paypal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com please share our show on facebook or twitter and thank you for doing that Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are suing the Twitter employee who deactivated Trump's account for not making it permanent. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the humping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the flower and the switch of late night. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2017, Drift Class, Blue Gal Podcast. Fake news, sparkle farters.